Welcome back to the Educated Home Buyer, where our guide is to help you buy right, borrow smart, and build wealth through real estate ownership and financing. So, Josh, one of the questions that you and I often get is the idea of should I consider existing construction, a home that's already built, or should I go with new construction? So, in today's video, I think we should go through the pros and the cons of existing versus new construction because there's a lot of differences and a lot of things that buyers you know, don't take into account when buying one versus the other. So thought we could do a deep dive into it in order to help create the educated home buyer. So Josh, when you're thinking new construction versus existing, you know, existing construction, what, what comes to mind? Well, for us here in, in California, we're, we currently only do loans in California. We're expanding to a few um, Western states here as well. But for us in California, there's not a lot of new construction, um, relatively not a lot uh, relative to existing, but there is a, a significant amount of, of new construction. And Jeb, when did this question really start getting posed to us on a much bigger level? It was about a year ago, beginning of 2021, when the market for existing homes got really competitive and really tight. People started asking you, people started asking me, hey, should we be looking at, at new construction where we can just walk in and sit down with the builder and, and more like give our order for the house versus getting into a bidding process? And this was before builders had kind of adjusted and, and made you bid or um, give your highest and best and, and all the things that they were doing. So I think today is a really good time to have this discussion as it's a little bit more balanced market and as the builders kind of caught up to some of the things that were happening in trends of the existing home market that now is a really good time to revisit and say what are the pros and cons of of each the the new construction stuff isn't that the easy one there jeb um the, the pros of it look at it. It's, it's new. It's brand new and all the bells right. and whistles and all of the great things. So, um, you know, no one says, Hey, you know what? I would love to go out and buy a used car. Forget those beautiful new ones out there. And it's kind of the same thing with, with housing is the, the shiny bells and whistles on the new homes are very attractive in addition to the ease of, of getting into them. So that's what I would say from our end, why were people uh, attracted to them more so than maybe what we saw in 2020, 2019, 2018. Um, but how about, how about from your end? What are you seeing from customers? No, I mean, I think it's, it's much the same, right? We got into an, you know, this, this market where there weren't a lot of homes out there. And so new construction, I mean, let's be honest, new construction, it, the idea of having new construction is, is, I mean, is nicer. I mean, yeah, I think of that too. It's new. It's, it's, you know, who wants to buy a 60, 70 year old home? I mean, there are people out there that like those homes, but if everyone could have new construction, have the upgrades they want in it, customize it. Wow. That's, I mean, that's, you know, the best, uh, scenario for, for any home buyer. But again, it's not that easy. It comes with a cost and it's not always, what it's made out to be, especially right now, Josh, we're in an environment where, you know, yeah, there's building out there or the idea of, of, of being able to build homes. And we can talk about this more in detail, but, you know, builders are, you know, the supply chains, the, you know, the idea of building a house in six months for, for most builders out there, I don't know if those timelines are realistic in this market because of those. And so it just adds, you know, another element, another layer to the new home, con you know, construction process. But let's, let's do this. Let's talk about maybe the pros of say new construction. Uh, then we can get into some of these cons and then we'll do the same thing for existing and kind of compare the two at the end of the day and help, you know, the listeners decide whether or not it's, it's a good fit. So you mentioned the first one in, in talking about new construction, it being new. And I kind of threw out something out there about being able to customize a house you know, with, you know, finishes and, you know, floors and counters and that sort of thing. But let's talk about that in a little bit more detail, because I think that's something that people don't take into account when thinking about new construction. Absolutely. Because Jeb, what do we all see? You drive around and you say, hey, new home community, prices starting at $499, prices starting at $899, prices Ooh, starting at $299. That's enticing. What, whatever those numbers are, you and I both know a contract is almost never written at, at those numbers. So 
the cool thing with new construction is you walk into a model and you see a designer has gone through not only the the finishes of the house the countertops the cabinets but then they've they've decorated it so you're thinking hey this is what i'm walking into but when you really see what the basic model comes with those are a lot of upgrades so you're paying for upgraded flooring upgraded cabinets upgraded countertops so uh, those, so so to be clear josh what you're saying is you walk into the model that's that's not what you're buying yeah you're you're, you're buying something entirely different unless you choose to pay for the things that they've done in that property well, here, let's look at it this way, Jeb. Here's an, an easy comparison. Um, I drive a Toyota Tundra. They just redid the Tundras for 2022. Um, you can get the work truck model um, that basically has no amenities and it starts somewhere in the mid 30s. If you want the one with every bell and whistle, it's $78,000. That's a $40,000 difference or a 100% difference between every bell and whistle and no bell and whistle. So you have to stop and, and think. Um, you know, I would say most of my clients that are buying Buying, um, anywhere from 400 to seven or 800,000. That's kind of the sweet spot for our new construction. First time buyers here in California, they're spending anywhere from 20 to $50,000 on upgrades to, to get those things. And, you know, part of the, what you might be saying is, wow, 20 to $50,000, that's a ton of upgrades. Well, the builder controls the upgrade process, both the cost of materials and the cost of labor. And that's an additional profit center for them. So if you had a home, if you could get it unfinished and go ahead and put your own stuff in, you could probably get that stuff for 60, 70% of the cost, but the, the builder controls that. So it's a pro and a con. It's super cool that you can get your house exactly the way you want it. And it's all brand new with the exact finishes you want. And if you go to the design center, there's literally a designer helping you through that. So that's a pro. Those are all good things. Well, and, and you can finance that cost, right? It's not cash. You have to come up with out of pocket after the fact, right? If you buy an existing home and we'll talk about this, if you want to do new flooring or new countertops or a new kitchen or bathrooms or whatever, you're coming up with that money out of pocket. New construction, you want the fancy counters, backsplashes, whatever, guess what? You can just throw it in the loan. But with, like Josh said, there's a cost to doing that. Absolutely. And, you know, you and I are talking about like the pretty things, the things that you see, um, even that basic model, the home home starting from $499, they have some basic things built into them. They're going to be much more energy efficient than a 30 or 40 year old, even a 20 year old home. They have better windows, they have better insulation, um, roofing materials, all, all of that stuff. So there's there are reasons to like and prefer a, a new home. You know, my my home has been completely redone, but you don't generally rip off all the drywall and put new insulation in and go and re-insulate the entire attic. So the the most efficient home, so it's going to have, um, you know, it's going to be cooler in the summer, warmer in the winter, cost you less to cool and heat, lower utility bills. All of that stuff is sort of an intangible positive in the favor of, of a new construction home. But on top of that, over the last few years, Jeb, the big one we've seen is, is smart home technology, that a lot of it, the home has to be wired for that and, and built into it. And a lot of the new home construction, you go out and look at more new homes than, than I do, but a lot of those are options that you can build in, or some of them come standard with, right. with a lot of smart home technology. No, I mean, it's, I mean, there's all the, the idea of new construction is great because of all the newness to it. And I think that's a lot of what we've, we've touched on here. Um, but you know, with that, let's let, I mean, I don't know that there's any more new, I mean, pros to, to new construction. I mean, the idea that it's new, everything that comes in, it's new. You have the ability to, you know, to, to, to have a new house. I mean, the, the less maintenance, less all of that, right? That's, those are all pros, but let's talk about some of the cons. Like, you know, what, what are the outside of the moment of saying waiting, like we talked about a minute ago, and, and we'll elaborate on that. So I want to save it for just a minute. You know, most new construction at the moment are, are being built further from say the epicenter uh, of, of a city, if you will. So take Orange County, for example, where we're located, Orange County is pretty densely populated. And so a lot of the construction or new construction at the moment are small infill pockets here and there. But if you look at Orange County and you say, okay, where are the big, you know, uh, communities being built? Well, they're on the outskirts of Orange County, which means that in order to, in order to get to, you know, the beach or the, the center, if you will, of the, of the county, you're driving further, um, in order to do that. And, and with that, 
a lot of times we're talking about infrastructure tax, you know, what you're paying Melarus, higher property taxes on some of this stuff when it comes to new construction as well. Absolutely. The So the commute time and the additional costs, a big thing that I like to tell people. So for us here in, in Orange County, what it's been about 20 years now that they built Ladera Ranch and they're finally building the next phase of that where they call it Rancho Mission Viejo. So it's even a little further down south than Ladera. But one of the downsides to Ladera was always the high property taxes. The cool thing is you have new schools, new firehouses, new uh, all of that stuff, but you're, you're paying a premium for that. So as a, as a numbers guy, as a loan guy, what I always like to tell people is probably the best example. When Ladera was first built, I had a client, um, they were looking in Huntington Beach. Huntington Beach at that time, you could buy a single family home for about 500, if I remember correctly. Whoa. And they were looking at a home down there that was gonna be like 375, 380. And they're like, it's just so much cheaper. We have to go down there. I go, the sale price price is cheaper. What we have to do is pencil out. You have some HOAs there. You have the higher property taxes. And when we penciled them out, it was almost the exact same cost. So the funny thing is, this is the trade-off that we're talking about in this conversation. They ended up buying in Huntington Beach, probably a 1960s built home instead of a 2003 built home because it was closer to where they were. There are definitely benefits to being in Ladera, but the the downside is those the higher costs in terms of, of the taxes and what that does for your monthly payment. And a lot of these newer areas, even if it's just a small HOA, 50, 60, $70 a month, it does add to that monthly payment. No. And, and in addition to that, when you buy new construction, what people don't consider more often than not is that you're just buying the house, right? I mean, the, the inside of the house is, is finished, you know, with regards to flooring and countertops and all that stuff. But what you don't have is you don't have blinds on the windows. And that might seem like, oh, it's not really a big deal. But when you've got, you know, 35 windows in your house and you've got to go put window treatments, blinds, whatever on these, these, you know, on every window, it starts to add up. In addition to most of the time you're buying a property that has no landscaping. There's no front yard. There's no backyard. There's nothing there. No plants. It's up to you as the homeowner to, to, to have that cost. And you've got to have the money upfront to do these. These aren't things that are considered that you're typically adding into the loan. These are things that you're financing out of your pocket outside of, of that property. Are and, and, and there are probably some other things there that I'm missing, Josh. And so just to put it into context, the window coverings, um, I, some of you know, I flipped a house last year. The plan was to flip. We kept it as a rental, 1800 square feet, newish built, um, like 2000. So it had a lot of windows. It wasn't your old 1950s home with just some basic windows. We were over $4,000 for nice renter grade window coverings in there. So we didn't do cheap ones, but they, for, you could easily spend $10,000, $15,000 for window coverings for your own 2000 square foot house. The number that's truly shocking to some people people is how much you can spend on, on exterior landscaping. And I'm not talking about putting a pool in. I've had clients spend $150,000 on a front and backyard without even putting in a pool. So it's hardscaping and maybe they end up with a built-in barbecue. Um, and by all means, can you do that for $40,000? Uh, you can. It's it's different than the $150,000 backyard, but it's not something where other than just sprinklers and sod and a little pad for a patio, it's not a $10,000 job if you have a 6,000 square foot lot that hasn't been um, landscaped. So from, from that perspective, it, it can add a significant amount to the cost. And when we're comparing, we want to make sure we're doing a full-blown apples to apples comparison. In your purchase price, what is included there, what is not included, and what is the actual and real cost for you um, out of pocket with the your, your down payment, your closing costs, plus the additional out of pocket things that cannot be financed into the loan. And what do you say, Josh, to the person that says, okay, you guys are talking about all these costs that are that are being added in because I'm getting a different flooring or I'm changing out the countertops, but because I'm using the builder's lender, they're giving me a $15,000 credit to the design center. And that's actually going to pay for you know the majority of, of the upgrades that I'm doing. So therefore, what you guys are saying isn't accurate. Is, is, that, is that a fair statement? Something you hear? I hear it definitely hear it a lot and you, you know it, it's funny most of our buyers uh borrowers and buyers of, of of new homes they know the deal i'm talking to a gentleman tonight at, at seven o'clock um he's talked to the builder's lender and he's like this is silly they're charging me so much more that it's a balance of yes we're giving you a credit so that we get the control of you working with our lender but 
uh, it's more than offset by the costs of that. Uh, you know, most, I would say most of the people that I know, they want to see the numbers. They want to at least compare and say, okay, cool. If I go with their lender, here's my terms and here's what I get in terms of a design center credit, a closing cost credit, whatever that is. And then here's what I can get out there on the open market. So you and I talk a lot here on the show and, and on the live every week. Don't just get one quote, get multiple quotes. Well, it's both a pro and a con in this situation. You don't have the choice. You are going to get figures from the builder's lender. They're never going to take my word or any other lender's word for it that you're qualified. You're going to do a qualification with the builder's lender. They're going to give you terms. Um, generally, not horrific, but not competitive. It, it, there's there's some some extra profit built in there to cover some of those uh, upgrades that you're going to be getting and incentives that you're getting from the builder. Now, what I what I heard you say with being very nice, Josh, and, and not saying it directly is that the builder is essentially going to overcharge most borrowers with the idea that they're they're overcharging them to give them the credit back that looks like an incentive towards the design center. And and they're again, they're a for-profit company. They they still have to make money and like you said they want control. So they're they're doing these things to keep that control, but it's not a a free $15,000 or a free um credit to the design center. You are paying for that because they're likely giving you a higher rate and it, charging you more fees. It's important to always remember that the builder's lender was selected for one, possibly two reasons. Oftentimes the builder, if they're big enough, has an ownership interest in that lender. So it's a subsidiary. But if they're not, if it's an independent mortgage company and they selected that mortgage company, their number one criteria for selecting a mortgage partner is ability to close on time. So if a certificate of occupancy comes in on Friday, they want to know that lender is going to close on Monday, not two weeks from Monday, not 10 days from Monday. Monday, that it is going to close as soon as feasible so that they can pay off the portion of their construction loan and eliminate their carrying costs. So the fact that you have a good experience, that you get good terms, that you worked with a good loan officer, I'm not saying they don't care about those things, but those are all a distant second to that lender not failing, not dropping the ball, and always being ready to close when the home is ready to occupy Gotcha. So Josh mentioned a moment ago about, you know, getting multiple quotes. So if you're working with a builder and they're giving you a quote, go out and get another quote, talk to a broker, talk to someone else and just compare numbers. That way, you know that what you're getting is the best deal. And maybe the builder ends up being the better deal. Maybe there that that could happen, but you don't know without getting a second opinion. So, you know, Josh and I talk a lot about working with experts and, and getting in touch with experts. There's a link um, in the description of this podcast that you can go to. Click on that link. We'll refer you to somebody that we know, you know, in whatever state that you're in that can guide you through that process and get you a second quote. So just do that. And that way, you know that, you know, who you're working with at least is is giving you something to compare it to. So we talked about you know, cross qualifying with with the builder's lender. Now, let's go back to something I mentioned in, early on in this: is the idea of of builders not being able to meet timeframes in a in an environment at the moment where you've got volatility in mortgage rates. So, prior to say the last five or six months, rates were kind of in a downward trend. Right, rates were getting better almost monthly. Um, at the same time, builders were, were still taking a while to build homes, but you didn't necessarily have the, the, the thought of rising rates. It wasn't a lot of risk involved in, in a lot of that decision making. That's changed a little bit, Josh. And so how do you feel like, you know, in the environment that we're in at the moment, looking at new construction, what are, what are your thoughts on that? I have probably the, the number one complaint or bailout that I've seen, and this is new, like last year, we it's, it's primarily a combination of the supply chain and shortage of labor is pushing out timelines for builders. Well, if the terms stay the same and home prices are going up, buyers are fine. Okay, it's a nuisance that my home is three months late, it's six months late, but if I put it under contract when rates were 3% and when I'm closing rates are 3%, I'm fine. But we're seeing now 
people who put properties under contract in the fourth quarter of last year, we're now getting close to the third quarter of this year. They don't have a lot of certainty on when they're going to close. I spoke to a lady last Friday that she says, I think I'm going to have to pull the plug. When I put it under contract, my quote from the builder's lender was three and a quarter. And the most recent number I got from them was six and a quarter. So it was a $1,400 difference in the monthly payment. She's like, I can qualify, but that wasn't what I signed up for. That wasn't what I, I bought. So you, you have to think in terms of you may not be in the same situation as her where she's a single lady, doesn't really care when the house is built. It would be nice to have it built sooner rather than later. But maybe you have a family, you have kids starting school, um, any number of things. You, you know, it's a very tight rental market. So staying in a rental to try and, and work with that timeline, it can be a difficult thing. And this isn't the builder's fault. It, it's just the nature of the market. They didn't create the supply chain issues. They're dealing with them and they didn't create the labor issues. They're dealing with them. And in that case, she probably loses her deposit, right? She backs out of that contract. That money is gone. Um, and yep. that's something we, we really didn't even discuss in this is talking about the cons. And it's something that that buyers should know um, or potential home buyers should know is that contracts written from, from home builders are different than those of existing home construct. I mean, of, of purchasing an existing home. You know, here in the state of California, the California Association of Realtors, you know, works with a legal team for years to come up with the contract that they use. And, and typically any single, every single buyer and seller in the state of California outside of new construction is going to use some form of that contract. New construction, entirely different. You know, that contract without, you know, the, the ancillary disclosures and whatever currently sits about 15 pages or so. And it continues to grow as, as more, um, legal jargon is added and and what have you, but a, a new construction contract, those things can be hundreds of pages and very much favor the builder. Whereas the exit, you know, the, the residential purchase agreement in say California is there to protect the seller. It's there to protect the buyer. It's there to protect the brokers involved in that transaction. The, the, you know, new construction contract is unilateral in the sense that it benefits the the con new construction company or the the builder pretty much entirely. So just keep that in mind when you're going under contract, you're putting money down, it might be more difficult to get that money back in those cases first in, you know, something of of existing homes. You know, Jeb, before we put the, the new construction side of this to bed, um, I don't want anyone to listen to this and hear the, the relatively long discussion of the cons of new construction and say, hey, Josh and Jeb are, are against new construction or new construction is a bad idea. I would absolutely, if I found the right community and it made sense for me, I would 100% buy a new construction home if it was right for me. What we're here for is to educate home buyers, to make the educated home buyer. And there's just more that you need to know and be aware of with new construction. It can still be a great idea. There's lots of good things about new construction. There's lots of great builders out there. We just want to make sure that you're going in eyes wide open and that you're checking all of the boxes and doing all of your due diligence so you don't end up at the end of the line with regrets or unhappiness. No, absolutely. And that's the thing is, is this is to educate you, to give you the information necessary so that you can make the right decision. It's not, these are, aren't all bad things. We're probably being, it sounds a little bit more pessimistic just because we're making sure that you're aware of the cons because the builder is never going to make you aware of those. We are here just to educate you and help you make the right decision. So with that, we've touched on new construction. Now let's talk about existing homes. This is what more people are familiar with. Um, these are homes that are built, you know, that have been lived in and, and resold, right? Some of these homes can be a year old. They could be new construction as of a couple of months ago. Somebody bought it and decided to sell it, or they could be built for a hundred years, depending on where you're buying. So Josh, thinking about the pros of, of existing homes, you know, what, what are the first things that come to mind? Well, we just talked about the the con of new construction and people getting pushed off and not having certainty on their terms. If you're able to get a, a, an existing home under contract, we're going to have a close of escrow of 21 days, 45 days, 60 days. So you have certainty and timeline and certainty of your terms. We can lock an interest rate the day you put that thing under contract and take the stress of that out of, out of the, the equation. So we have this nice defined timeline from my end, from your end, you know, 
know, we're going to order an appraisal. We're going to get disclosures out immediately. Things that take longer uh, on new construction. From your end, you're going to do the inspection. Um, all, all of these things happen very early and you have that timeline. So the fact that the home is available today, it's done. You can walk through, touch it, smell it, feel it. Um, all of those things is the primary benefit versus again, where the new construction got really popular for us 18, 24 months ago. It was because I could put it under contract right away um, and not have to compete with everyone. Well, now the competition is a little bit less, but still competition out there for uh, existing homes. But once you get the, the contract and you have an accepted offer, now we have a finite timeline that we're working with and a lot of the unknowns are taken out of the equation, which is what I would say today is a primary benefit of existing construction to a lot of buyers. No, absolutely. And, and, and the thing about real estate that, you know, people say, you know, when you hear real estate, they say location, location, location right? Existing homes, you have more of a pick of the location that you want to be in. If you want to be in a certain school district, or if you want to be by the beach or what have you, you have more options when it comes to existing homes versus new construction. You might be in an area where, you know, the, the, the new construction is 15, 20 miles from where you actually want to be or where, you know, is, is your ideal location. And so, you know, we talked about being able to get them immediately. You also typically have more options. Now, the past two years have been, you know, a, a, a time frame that's been different than any time in history because existing homes were so low that more people, like you mentioned earlier, were considering new construction just because it was like, you know, is a panic and I can't get this. So I, I'm willing to consider that. Well, Things are changing a little bit. There's more inventory coming to the market. And with that, you've got more options. And that's that's a huge benefit in in you know um in being able to decide where you want to be is is considering existing homes. Um, because you know, here in, in Orange County where we are, you know, if you looked at the city that we live in in Huntington Beach, I know of two projects at the moment that are new construction. Um, one, I don't even know when it's going to be built. I mean, they literally just b broke ground and one, you know, right down the street from the office, they've been, that's been, they had a sign in the ground for months. I mean, over years, I mean, year, maybe two at this point saying new homes were coming and they've just started to break ground, but it's an infield development, really small. You, you know, you don't really have the option. If that's what you want, that's, that's really it. I mean, there, there is cool. nothing else in the city. So just something to keep in mind. Now, what about cost? Are, that, are existing homes less expensive or are they going to be more expensive? I mean, depending well, on what's going on. That's exactly what I was going to say. The one that right here near the office that you were talking about, um, they're well over a million and these homes don't have lots. So um, they're what you're getting, all of the con, uh, all of the pros we talked about with new construction, they're brand new, energy efficient, but you're not gonna have a single story with a big lot. You're gonna have a two story right next to your, your neighbor. So when you factor in those uh, pieces to the equation, that price is really, really high when you're considering that you're getting half the land of the house that you could go a few blocks over and pay you know, 1.3, 1.4, which again is much more expensive, but you're getting double the land. And when for us here in Southern California, the land is probably 70, 80% of the value of, of properties at this point in time. So when you account for all of that, generally an existing home is going to be cheaper than the, the new construction. Everything, it's a rule of thumb. You can certainly find uh, a trophy home in a really high priced neighborhood that's even more expensive on a per square foot basis than new construction. But if you're going per square foot of home and land that you're getting, generally an existing home is going to be cheaper because it's sort of like new car versus used car. Yeah, no. And that's something that we didn't really mention with the new construction is the lot size. I mean, you kind of touched on it there, but existing homes where we are, the lots are probably double what you would get on on new construction. And and the reason for that is builders are trying to maximize profit, right? They're 60 years ago when they built a lot of these houses, the idea, I mean, yeah, profit was was, you know, in mind, but there was a lot of land. They didn't have to think about where the next project was going to go because there was plenty of land to build. Now, these builders have, you know, trouble getting vacant land. I mean, they're building against bidding rather against other builders, making it difficult to find. And so when they're able to obtain land, pull permits, get everything going, 
they they want to maximize. Therefore, you know, smaller lots, homes that are two, three stories now, a lot of the single level ranch homes don't exist with new construction because the cost, it, it just, it makes more sense to build a bigger home on a smaller lot because you can do more of it and, and the builder's there to make money. So Josh, this is something you probably don't hear very often, um, but something we threw in here is, you know, I want something with some character. I want something that doesn't look like my neighbor's house. I don't want, you know, a track development where every house is the same. Well, here in, New in California, this isn't custom construction in many cases. This isn't buy a piece of land, you know, hire a builder, build me a house. It's very much go into a community that's already has a predetermined number of homes, a predetermined, uh, you know, allotment of floor plans, and they're going to be spaced out. Every three to four houses are going to be exactly the same. So, you know, existing homes, um, you have a little bit of difference in a lot of these neighborhoods. You go, you know, even though the home might be the same floor plan, people have added on, people have changed them, you know, from the, the front to, you know, added rooms in the back, whereas if you pulled up a map and looked at it, you wouldn't even know that a lot of these floor plans were the same versus new construction. You know, it's it's going to be very much, you know, your house is is much like your neighbor's. Yeah. And when we talk about it, it's funny in many parts of the country where so here in Orange County, it was one of the first areas where they built out large tracts of homes. So my home was built in 1972 and it was built as attractive homes. There's, you know, five different models with like three different elevations each. You can go, oh, that's that plan and this is this. So that's not all that different than if you buy in 2022. The same thing's going to happen. It's going to be attractive home. The builder's going to have four different plans, two or three different elevations. Maybe you can have a little bit of a different style. Um, but some areas where you go back were built, you know, 50s, early 60s, and before that, not so much track style home. A lot of them built one off. And so they just have a lot more um, soul and style. Um, if you want a craftsman home, you can go and find a craftsman home. If you want a mid century modern, you can find uh, one of, of those. Whereas the new construction, you're going to get whatever it is that the builder wanted to to build the style of that neighborhood. No, absolutely. And so, I mean, I think that pretty much sums up the pros. The cons is going to be a pretty short list with regards to existing construction because, you know, you're buying a property that's, you know, generally as is, right? If it's 60 years old, it's 60 years old, regardless of whether it's had upgrades or, or been remodeled or what have you. So that that's one of the downsides is you don't get the fancy new house, um, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, sometimes you get older, older finishes, older appliances, you know, you might walk into one of these homes, still has the, the popcorn ceilings and, you know, uh, boxy floor plans, you know, walls that aren't open, right. Everything that that's going on in the market right now that's popular is, is really open, great rooms, you know, kind of a flow from the front door all the way to the back. A lot of the existing homes, unless they've been redone, are are still very much that 60s, 70s style home where, you know, you don't have that open feel. And if you want it, there's a cost to uh, to doing that. You can do anything you want to them, but the cost, uh, again, is the big thing. So you, we can certainly see, well, hey, I could buy an existing home and it's $300,000 cheaper. And then you go, oh. Hey, by the time I do all my upgrades, everything I want, I, I give 200,000 of that back and I have six months of construction where instead of the builder being the foreman and the contractor on that, that's me. I'm, I'm the one in charge of, of everything. So it's sort of for new consumer existing construction. It's a pro and a con. You can do anything you want, but there's a cost and a time and you can't sort of offload that effort and energy onto the builder. No. And the lastly, I mean, typically existing homes, you got more more competition, right? Because it's, you know, they're less expensive than new construction in, in many cases, or they're, you know, in, in the pockets that people want to be in, or it's the floor plan that everybody wants, the single level with the three car garage that Josh has, you got more competition and, and more competition means, you know, potentially having to bid more for that home and potentially missing out. And, you know, exactly what people went through over the last couple of years. And even though more inventory is coming to the market, the market's cooling a little bit. The the hot pockets of homes, the the areas that people have wanted to be for years prior to the pandemic are still going to be popular areas. So if you're considering new construction, just know 
it's you know it doesn't mean you can't get a house for for less than the asking price doesn't mean that you can't get a deal in some cases it just means that typically speaking you know when it comes to existing versus new construction you're likely going to have a little bit more competition just because of the affordability side of things um so josh we talked about you know pros and cons of existing versus new construction i'm just going to throw you a, a quick question out there in the environment that we're in at the moment you know new construction is really nice there's a lot of benefits to that you know if you today could be you know could could find a house that you wanted to buy new construction in huntington beach but they told you it was 12 15 months out from being built or you could find something that that worked but needed you know some upgrades or what have you but you could buy it today with the environment that we're in rising rates what would you consider and i know this is a question we didn't even think about but i just love to know what you're thinking i i won't answer for myself on this because again being in the business having four of uh, subscription services of the best interest rate analysis out there i feel like i am a better position to absorb that stress and and concern of where the market is going for most of the buyers that I talk to, given those two alternatives, they would absolutely prefer to have the home that they can have the certainty on. They may prefer to have a new home, but that longer timeline, 12, 15 months, not even sure that timeline is gonna be hit. And what do interest rates look like? What do loan programs look like at that point in time? For most people, shortening the timeline, giving themselves some certainty and bringing an end to the stress. I have a client that wrote an offer this morning. We were a little bit delayed here recording because we had to get a pre-approval letter out and she's texting that she's on pins and needles. Well that's on an existing condominium. So in a day or two, that's gonna be gone. In 30 days, if they get it, we're gonna be finished. You can have that pins and needles feeling with new construction for six months or, or a year. And most people don't have that type of, of risk tolerance given their options. Now, and, and lastly, with the environment that we're in at the moment, so depending on where you read, we're somewhere between two to six million homes behind with regards to the number of homes we need to meet existing demand. What do you think happens in an environment at the moment with builders? Do you think builders continue to to build in, in this environment with with rising rates, or do builders take a step back, finish maybe the projects that they're on, and sit on their hands while the market kind of figures itself out? I think builders will continue to build while being careful not to overbuild. And some of that then becomes what type of supply are they bringing to market? When you say two to six million units, what do we really need? We need lots of entry level homes, affordable homes. Well, from the builder's perspective, what do they want to build? They want to build luxury homes, much higher margins. It's like, uh, again, um, Toyota doesn't want to sell you that base model work truck. They want to sell you the $80,000 capstone model truck that has, you know, a 25 percent margin in it versus you know twenty five hundred dollars total margin builders are no different so the problem is their incentives are not necessarily aligned with your incentives so i don't know how much of a dent they're going to be able to put into that that lack of supply in the near-term future you know if we have a recession and the market comes down um th that could be uh, something that would push them into building more entry-level stuff as as the desired price points come down but we'll, we'll, we'll have to see i'm not super worried about builders completely backing out of the market um, but they will absolutely be careful not to overbuild and we know when we're talking about a lack of supply they couldn't literally overbuild but what they could do is they could build more in a time frame than the market is able to absorb at profitable prices for them no absolutely I, I mean and, and I think that's good for anybody to know that's out there looking at at these properties is is you know I think if you're looking at new home construction and you want new home construction I think it could be a good time over the next couple of months just to kind of watch it and see what it does because you know builders might start backing down on some of the measures that they've had in place you know over the last couple of years they haven't really wanted to cooperate with real estate agents they haven't you know um they've been doing the highest and best when it comes to making offers they didn't really have a set price i think as the market shifts a little bit cools a little bit builders will get back to some of the basic things that they were doing prior to this and as a home buyer, it gives you a better opportunity to find the one. And if you're looking, saying no, existing home is is where I want to be because of you know all the the cons you mentioned. I'm out. Well, there's going to be more inventory, more things for you to choose from. So just you know keep keep your eye on the market and um, just make sure you're making the right decision for you. So for now, 
you know, we're going to end it there with regards to existing homes versus new construction. But we'd love to to get your feedback on what you guys want to hear. There's an email address, you know, in the description below. Reach out to us. Let us know what you want us to touch on in more detail. But for now, we appreciate you listening. We appreciate you being here. We will see you again next time. Adios.